Now, if you follow my channel, you know I recently reviewed the ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4, a highly anticipated laptop here for 2021. Moved to the 16 inch, 16 to 10 aspect ratio display, really gorgeous in that regard. 11 gen Tiger Lake processors, vapor chamber cooling, depending on the GPU option you choose. And overall, I think it was a great experience. You get the ThinkPad keyboard, which I absolutely love. It was really good in my opinion. But of course there is its mobile workstation counterpart that I just took delivery of. Yes, it's the ThinkPad P1 Gen 4. Now physically, it looks the same in terms of the exterior as the X1 Extreme Gen 4, but where you're gonna find some changes are under the hood. This is running a Xeon processor. It's also paired with the RTX A2000 GPU, a little bit different than what we normally see. We're gonna get into it and more in this unboxing and first look review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 4 Mobile Workstation here for 2021. Coming up. Now, as we take a look at the specs, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from Lenovo. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $1,859 US. For those interested, check out that link below for more information and where you can buy one. And my review unit as tested comes in at $3,977.99. You can head on over to CDW to get this exact model or head on over to Lenovo to configure the model that you might want. There are a lot of different SKUs to choose from, so choose carefully. Now, my review unit that I have here today is powered by the Xeon W11855M with vPro. That's a mobile workstation class processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM, two terabytes of SSD storage, storage and that's PCIe Gen 4 so you're going to get the really fast reads and writes we'll get into that in a moment and it has that 16 inch 2.5k display resolution of 2560 by 1600 the same one that we saw on the X1 Extreme Gen 4 that I recently reviewed and with the specs and pricing out of the way let's find out what you get inside the box let's open it up And just like the X1 Extreme Gen 4, there's no LAN port on the unit itself, so they give you a USB-C to Ethernet adapter. No additional cost thrown in the box. You get a 170-watt power adapter that uses Lenovo's own proprietary connector, the same one we saw with the X1 Extreme Gen 4. And of course, they give you the extension cord as well. You get some warranty information along with a setup guide. Now, physically, the exterior is exactly the same as the X1 Extreme Gen 4. Now, 1.8 kilograms or 3.99 pounds, you're looking at something that's actually pretty portable considering that this is a 16-inch laptop, so you can take it with you on the go. Pair that with the optional 5G. It's a great mobile tool to take with you on a business trip or something like that. And just like the X1 Extreme Gen 4, this has that carbon fiber magnesium chassis. And if you go with the UHC Plus model, you get that carbon fiber weave to give it a little bit more pizzazz. All right, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side. We get your power port, two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that do power delivery, display port, and of course, data transfer. Unfortunately, just like the X1 Extreme Gen 4, you cannot charge with those ports, not enough power to charge the power that this needs. So of course, you'll need to use the adapter that comes in the box. And then of course, you get an HDMI 2.1 port, which is good to see. And of course, a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. Moving over to the right side, you get a full-size SD card reader. And as you can see, the cards do not sit flush with the unit. They stick out a little bit, as you see here. And you get two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And then finally, a Kensington lock port to round out the ports on this laptop. I would say, all in all, an excellent port selection. And one thing to note, if you do go with the optional 5G, that SIM card slot will be located between the SD card slot and the two USB-A ports. 
And once again, Lenovo makes it very easy to get inside this laptop to upgrade the RAM, to upgrade the SSDs and so forth. You got to love that. Now, all you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate that comes off really easily. No need for a pry tool and you're in. And of course, once inside, you'll notice that it has a 90 watt hour battery. We'll get into the battery life and charging times in the upcoming full review. And I wanted to point out something interesting. As you can see next to it is the X1 Extreme Gen 4. And as you can see, the Extreme Gen 4 has the vapor chamber cooling because it has the RTX 3060 GPU. Whereas this, the P1 Gen 4, doesn't have the vapor chamber cooling. That means it has that extra SSD slot. That means you'll have space for the optional 5G. So the trade-offs are pretty interesting. And if you want to go with that P1 Gen 4 with this A2000 RTX class GPU, you won't get that vapor chamber cooling. Very interesting take on it. I want to know what you think about it. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, as far as the RAM is concerned, there are two SOTUM slots, and this supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM, and I have two sticks in there, two 32 gigabyte sticks, running in dual channel mode. We're going to get the better performance, of course, and since this has a Xeon processor, it also supports ECC RAM as well as non-ECC RAM, so that is something to be aware of. And of course, it is also the faster rank eight RAM as opposed to the slower rank 16. So it's good to see the faster RAM on this. And that is welcome indeed. And I'm happy to report there are two SSD slots and my unit has one of the slots taken up by a two terabyte PCIe Gen 4 SSD. And I gotta say, extremely fast reads and writes as you can see from these results. Now, as far as wireless is concerned, this has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2, and so far, both are working well. One thing to note, the Wi-Fi card is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade it down the road. Now, the good news is there's also the optional 5G you can get with this. It's the Qualcomm Snapdragon X55 5G modem. It's an M.2 card, and of course, that would allow you to be connected on the road, and that is definitely something I would consider if you're looking at this mobile workstation. All right, let's talk about the excellent display on this. It's the same exact display options as far as the X1 Extreme Gen 4 is concerned. We get that here. It's a 16 inch WQXGA 2560 by 1600, 16 to 10 aspect ratio IPS display. It's a 400 nit display, but I actually got higher than that. We'll talk about that in just a moment. It's an anti glare coating on it, no unnecessary glare or reflections, which you've got to love. And it's also pretty color accurate with a 1.27 delta e score remember anything below two is considered color accurate and it's got good coverage of the color gamut 100 percent srgb 77 percent adobe rgb 78 percent of the dcip3 wide color gamut and 72 percent ntsc makes this a decent choice if you are a content creator that does lightroom photoshop color grading and of course video editing and as I mentioned, this panel is rated at 400 nits in terms of brightness. I actually measured higher than that, 414. So this is going to be great for indoor and outdoor use, especially since this does have that anti-glare coating. It's a matte display, so you don't get the glare and reflections, as I mentioned, and you won't have the problems in direct sunlight. That's pretty good. And because it has that 16 to 10 aspect ratio, it's going to be great for productivity work, Microsoft Office, spreadsheets, email, documents like that. You'll see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. But unlike a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which is optimized for watching movies, you'll have black bars on the top and the bottom here. And that's because of that taller nature, as we discussed. Not a big deal, but just something to be aware of. Now, one final note on the display, there are three total options when it comes to the display. We have the QHD plus resolution one with 2560 by 1600. That's the one we're looking at here right now. But there are two other display options. They're both UHD plus. One is a touchscreen model and the other one is a non-touch. They both are rated at 600 nits, which are really bright. And they are Dolby Vision displays. So those are some nice options to have, especially if you want more pixels, you want higher resolution, especially when it comes to the color grading you have that option so this is the front facing camera on the brand new thinkpad p1 gen 4 mobile workstation here for 2021 this is a 1080p 30 frames per second webcam what do you think about the video quality what do you think about the 
audio quality of the internal mics. Now, this particular unit does have an IR webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, which is good. There's also a fingerprint scanner that's found by the power button, which doubles as the fingerprint scanner working well, registering my finger each and every time I used it. So really good so far. What do you think of for this as far as Zoom, as far as your work from home needs? Let me know in that comment section below. Now, one thing to note, there is a shutter switch that allows you to turn off the webcam for more security and privacy. I'm a big fan of that. Now, you can open the screen 180 degrees, as you see here, and I love that feature, always getting the perfect viewing angle each and every time. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now, as far as that keyboard is concerned, a lot of criticism has been directed towards the X1 Extreme Gen 4, and I think this one as well, for not having the great key travel like it used to have, although I disagree. I think this is still an excellent keyboard with 1.5 millimeters of key travel, very comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. I thought it had excellent tactile feedback, and I really enjoyed the typing experience on it. I still think it's one of the best in the business, if not the best in the business. Business. It also has a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And I like the fact that the keys light up white against the black keys, easy to see the contrast between the two. And the precision touchpad I thought was very responsive. Two finger scrolling worked really well. All the gestures worked as you'd expect. Excellent implementation here. You get physical mouse buttons, of course, in addition to the clickiness of the touchpad. Worked well in every sense of the word. And of course, it also has the track point, a relic of the past, in my opinion, although some people are really tied to it. They do like to navigate through the OS using that track point, which was very responsive, and I had no issues with it. Of course, it's part of the ThinkPad DNA, not going anywhere anytime soon. Now, when it comes to the audio, we're looking at top firing speakers, two speaker grills, one on each side of the keyboard. They're Dolby Atmos speakers, so you're going to get a really enhanced spatial audio experience, which is going to be really good. I thought the volume was very good. The mids were good. Hint of bass as well. I thought overall the sound was very good. Now, you also have dual far field microphones. We got an example of that already when we already looked at the webcam. That's an IR webcam, as I mentioned earlier. All right, let's talk about what the processor is running here. We're looking at the Intel Xeon W11855M with vPro. This is a mobile workstation class processor paired with the NVIDIA RTX A2000 series GPU. And what we're looking at here, in a sense, is certain chipset that is optimized for certain I ISV certified applications that you'll find in professional environments. So when you're looking at these benchmarks, you need to keep that in mind. It may not score as high as certain other processors that we've seen with the Core i9, for example, with the RTX 3080 and stuff like that, which by the way, are available as options on this laptop as well. And I think the overall performance so far has been really good. Keep in mind, I have 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM on this as well. I'll have more to say on performance, thermals, and of course, battery life in the upcoming full review. Now, speaking of the battery, this has the same 90 watt hour battery as we saw with the X1 Extreme Gen 4, and I'm expecting similar battery life. I'll give you all the numbers coming very soon. You can expect, I think, anywhere from seven to eight hours of mixed use, but again, I need to do my formal testing on it to give you the actual numbers. All right, let's bring it all home. So far, so good. I'm really liking the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 4 mobile workstation here for 2021 a lot to like especially if you are considering this versus the thinkpad x1 extreme gen 4 i think for the more mainstream consumer business user i think that one will be your better choice but of course if you are that mobile professional that needs the kind of chipset that is optimized for certain professional applications with say isv certifications this is definitely one you want to look at got a gorgeous 16 inch 16 to 10 display qhd resolution of course two sodium slides 2M.2 2280 slots, highly upgradable, easily upgradable to get inside this laptop. I love the way they do that. And of course, fast PCIe Gen 4 SSD speeds, as we saw in the results. SD card reader is a great addition, of course, to this. We want to see that. Excellent port selection overall. ThinkPad keyboard is here, 1.5 millimeters of key travel. Excellent Dolby Atmos speakers, really good in that regard, good for spatial audio optional 5g for the road warrior that needs that always on connection to get work done 1080p ir webcam worked really well i thought the quality was pretty decent i thought it had really decent gpu performance although mediocre cpu performance i'll get into that in the upcoming full review 
And I like what Lenovo did here as far as this mobile workstation space is concerned, a 16 inch, very portable laptop that you will be able to take with you to get work done if you are that mobile professional. I'll have more to say on this coming very soon. So what do you think about this bad boy, the P1 Gen 4, physically looking the same as the X1 Extreme Gen 4, the really nice magnesium alloy on this, as far as the build, rock solid, excellent keyboard. We got that 16 inch display, QHD resolution, 2560 by 1600, 16 to 10, as I mentioned. And you could also get it, that would be 3840 by 2400. You can get into both a touch and non-touch model, Dolby Vision, and that would get up to 600 nits, although this was pretty bright in its own right, over 400 nits measured in my measurements. Uh, really a lot to like here. Uh, there is some interesting stuff here with the CPU GPU combination, a Xeon processor paired with that RTX A2000. And it's really optimized for certain professional applications with ISV certification. So you're going to really take advantage if you are in those markets using those applications. So this will get the job done. It's light enough at 3.99 pounds or 1.8 kilograms to take with you. Optional 5G is which I absolutely love. If you are that road warrior, the always con on connection allows you to get work done. The keyboard is excellent. I love that 1.5 millimeters of key travel. So it's all working well in that regard. Now, the price is a little bit expensive, of course. This is a little bit under $4,000 over at CTDW as configured. Check out that link below. I will leave a link for those interested. And of course, you could always go, on, go over to Lenovo's website to configure your own SKU or have a ready-made SKU, which there are plenty of over there. Again, check out that link below. Now, it also has the same 90 watt hour battery as the X1 Extreme Gen 4. I'm expecting similar battery life. Again, I need to do my formal testing to get you the actual numbers. On that X1 Extreme Gen 4, I think I got about eight hours and 42 minutes on my continuous web surfing test. So as a point of reference, we probably can expect something in that range with this one. Again, I'll bring you those numbers very soon. What do you think about the P1 Gen 4? Would you get this mobile workstation over its counterpart, the X1 Extreme Gen 4, which is a more mainstream laptop geared towards more mainstream consumers? Let me know in that comment section below. Now, one thing to note on my review unit, there's no vapor chamber cooling. That means you're going to get that extra SSD slot. That means you're going to have the space for the optional 5G. That was something we didn't get with the higher end models of the X1 Extreme Gen 4. Now that review unit had the RTX 3060, so therefore it needed the vapor chamber cooling. No room for that second SSD slot. No room for the optional 5G. Something to be aware of. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.